Fair use allows to distribute, reproduce, and show clips for criticism, commenting, reporting, teaching, and research of copyrighted material without authorization of the copyright. I'll tell you what's the worst part about television is the is the programming, yeah. the philosophy. Okay, I mean the the manipulating of your mind, the philosophy, the the the, the mentality, the the system of thinking, the ideology. That's what's wrong with television. That's what's wrong with movies. That's where they're really getting in your head. Take for example Walt Disney. Right? And many people that will preach against the TV, they'll preach against the movies, they'll preach against Hollywood because it's obvious that that stuff is bad. But then they'll say, well, well, we watch Disney movies. And I've been to the home of preachers and Christians who would never watch TV or the movies, but yet they have the whole library of the Walt Disney movies. You know those white plastic cases? And they have them all lined up. And I mean, they have tons of them lined up, scores. I don't know how many there are, but there's hundreds of them. They have them lined up and, and lined up, and they have their kids watching those movies all day long. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove to you right now that those movies are wicked. You say, what? Disney movies? Come on. You're crazy. They're rated G. Well, let's see. First of all, did you know this? Did you know that Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages? Subliminal messages. Now, we're ta- what are we talking about tonight? Sorcery. What are we talking about tonight? Uh, getting inside your mind and messing with you. Uh, controlling your thought process by, by uh, supernatural means or demonic means. Or Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages. And you say, oh, that's a hoax. I've seen it with my own eyes. When I was a teenager, I had a friend of mine sit me down at his house and show me the subliminal messages in the Disney movies. They're filled with subliminal messages. Let me give you some examples. The Lion King, filled with subliminal messages. Okay, all throughout the movie, there are pornographic pictures hidden in the movie. Like you'll be watching the movie, and just for a few seconds, something filthy will come on. Like off to the side, there'll be some kind of a, you know, reproductive anatomy will, will pop up. You know, over here, and then and then over here. There's this one point where the lion, you know, he, he kind of goes like... Like this? And a cloud of dust comes up and just spells the word sex. And the word sex is, is put in the Lion King movie subliminally, literally, hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. The, 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 the shapes on the screen will spell the word. And I've seen it. I mean, I had my friend sit me down at his house and pausing the movie, showing me the word S-E-X popping up on the screen at different times because he knew where they were. And he would show me these things. Another one... Uh, and they all are filled with it. You know, Aladdin is another one. In the movie Aladdin, uh, there's, a po- there's a part in the movie where the guy, the, what's his name, Aladdin? There's a point in the movie where he tells Jasmine to take all her clothes off. But you don't even know it unless you know it's there. You listen to it and he mumbles it kind of under his breath. Leave me alone. So how's our little bow doing? Come on, good tears. Take all the love. So how's our little bow doing? Come on, good tears. Take all the love. Come on, good tears. Take all the love. Come on, good tears. Take all the love. And I mean, once you know it's there, you hear it just as clear as day. But you didn't know that it was there, you wouldn't hear it. And uh, the Little Mermaid has a, a filthy picture drawn in the cover on the front of the Little Mermaid. And nobody would realize it until somebody shows you and says, look at this. And you look at it, whoa! And all throughout the movie there are scenes, I'm not even going to describe some of the scenes in The Little Mermaid, where subliminal messages are coming on the screen. Uh, the, the other movie, uh, Beauty and the Beast. There, you know, a nude woman pops up a few times in the background of Beauty and the Beast. Filled with subliminal messages. Your kids are watching it and their mind is maybe not even seeing it, but it's going into their subconscious. Words flashing on the screen over and over. S-E-X, 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 you know, nudity, uh, uh, filth, just all the smut is just coming on the screen. Come on, oh, those movies are harmless. They're filled with subliminal messages. Who knows what your kids are being programmed? Oh, but you know what? I'm sure that it's only just the Disney movies. I'll guarantee you it's the rest of Hollywood probably doing the same thing. 
And these Disney movies, at first when I was a teenager and somebody showed me this, I thought it was just a couple movies, a couple scenes. But you know, as time has gone on, I've realized that virtually every Disney movie is packed with hundreds of subliminal messages to program the, the minds of your children. Okay, but then forget the subliminal message. Just the message of the Disney movies is perverted. Even if you just forget the subliminal message. I mean, for example, what, what movies did we bring up? The Little Mermaid. You know, a half animal, half human being. And that's perverted in and of itself. All throughout the Bible, every false god is a half animal, half human being. They're constantly merging of animals and human beings. It's paganism. It's, it's wicked. And yet every Disney movie is pretty much based on the merging of a human being with an animal. It's described in the Bible. And, and uh, the, the movie The Little Mermaid, you know, she's topless the whole time, right? She's just wearing like a bikini top. How is that? Is that how you want your daughter to dress? Is that, oh, but there's no cussing. There's no nudity. Do you want your daughter going around in a bikini top? Is that modest apparel? Is that what Jesus Christ would have you to wear, ladies? No. The movie's filled with Satanism, witchcraft. There's some, what is it, Ursula, some witch that's casting spells and, and using sorcery and demonism. Oh, pretty innocent, right? All of them are filled with it. In, in the movie Beauty and the Beast, uh, the whole first half of the movie is these, these prostitutes in the town that are dressed just half naked, dancing around, you know, admiring this guy, the big, strong, handsome guy. But all these girls are dressed indecently. They're, 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 they're obscene in their gestures, subliminal messages. And then the whole movie is basically just exalting a certain physical standard of appearance. Beauty and the Beast is a movie about a woman who falls in love with an animal. And in the movie, they keep acting like, well, he's just ugly. He's not ugly, he's an animal. But there's a difference between being ugly and being a beast, being an animal. And if you've seen the, if you've seen the cartoon, it's an animal. It's like a dog. It's like a big dog man. Or something. I mean, it's clearly an animal, and yet she falls in love with him while he's an animal. You know, only when she kisses an animal does he become a human being. Oh, wow. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Read the Bible sometime. Hey, brothers and sisters, it's Jared. I pray that this video shed light on the satanic agenda behind the Disney films. Now, this world says that Disney is the number one thing for kids. I know that my parents-in-law are buying all sorts of Disney things for the nieces and nephews and the cousins and I had to put my foot down and say that I don't want my daughter to have those things. My daughter is only one years old and they were already when she was going over there trying to have her watch the Disney Junior show. They say it's good for teaching and learning but I know that this stuff is programming so I'm going to make a stand you all can do what you want, but as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord, and it's going to be unpopular. It's not going to be a thing that people understand. But when you look at the background of Disney, Walt Disney was a Freemason, and his whole idea was to bring and make magic a mainstay in homes by putting a cartoon cover on it. So. You see that he was a part of the Luciferian doctrine. And also, if you look at the symbol that they have, this isn't his signature, okay? This is a designed logo, and it has the mark of the beast hidden inside of it. And I know many people may be like, no, dude, that's not a 666. Listen, why then, on many Disney stores, do they have the same sixes making up Mickey Mouse's head? He had Masonic Lodges at Disneyland, and the Club 33 is a head nod to the 33 degree of Masonry. All of this symbolism is just in the parks. Now, you go to the movies, and you've seen that it is full of satanic symbolism. Here in the Dumbo movie, you have the pyramids going around, then a satanic serpent, an all-seeing eye. And, and what does this scene come from? It comes from the Dumbo and the mouse drinking alcohol. I mean, these are the kind of images and situations that it's promoting to our children. And then you look at the Disney stars themselves. Now, 
there's all sorts of programming that goes into these kids. They pick them when they're young and they raise them up inside of this satanic system. You see the Miley Cyruses come and they bring them out as innocent so it gets underneath the parents' radar. But as they get older, they corrupt them in a dragnet plot to bring some of the kids down to that level too. Examples of this are Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. Now, I want you guys to think about this just biblically. Now, the Bible says, love not the world, nor the things in the world, or the love of the Father is not in you. And Disney is the pinnacle of the world's entertainment. It has... Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, all the princesses, Winnie the Pooh, Mickey Mouse, and Goofy, and Daffy Duck. If you're a kid in this generation, in this world, you're going to be presenting Disney. And Satan has his hands all over it. And then it says conform not to this world. We cannot conform to this world. And you see all the stars and the idols of this world wearing the same exact symbolism of the Mickey Mouse ears. It's a programming uh, symbol. It's a tool that they use to get this implanted in your mind, guys. I mean, you, your discernment for the things of God has to see that there is something not godly about this. And just besides all of that, okay, take out all the subliminals, take out all of those things, just say there's none of it, okay? And just look at how it promotes magic and witchcraft. It is not right. The Bible calls those things an abomination. We put a cartoon cover on it and suddenly it's okay. We need to truly look at these things in the light of the Holy Spirit. These are our kids. If we're setting our kids down in front of these things, we are accountable for that. We need to really think about this right now in the light of the Holy Spirit. We have been appointed as stewards of our children. Is this what Jesus Christ wants my child sitting down in front of? Is this going to help my child grow in the knowledge and love for her Savior, Jesus Christ? Jesus warned us about this world, and I think in the church today we have a disconnect. When he said, love not the world, nor the things in the world, or the love of the Father is not in you, I really don't think we're understanding that. He meant those words. He saw this stuff before it came. He knew how deceitful sin was and how it pulled on the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And he laid his life down so that we would not be ensnared by these things. Is his blood that cheap? Is our sin worth that much? Let's stay vigilant against these things. To glorify God and to protect our children. God bless, guys. Okay, so I was kind of bored, and I was checking out uh, whatever was on TV, which happened to be Road to El Dorado, and I saw this. Okay, so I don't know if you caught that, but as it came in, there are sucking sounds and sounds of a guy feeling pretty good. And then uh, let's see where her head comes up from, okay? I'm going to run that again so you just can see it from, uh... okay, let's see. Okay, well, I'm going to run it back real quick so you can see exactly where her head came up from, okay? Okay, so here we go. Bear with me. Now let's see. Her head comes up. You see where her head comes up from? And now let's see where his head is. Okay, that's where his head comes up from. So, she's clearly down by his crotch. His head comes up, and her hands are still exactly where her head was, which would be by his crotch. And my man's hair is messed up. He's got a big old grin on his face. And uh, let's see if I can get you to hear the sounds in the beginning a little more clearly. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, sex, oral sex, and the road to El Dorado, yet another in the long line of Disney perversions. So uh, 
that's all. I was just watching this, and uh, you let me know what you think. But uh, <laughs> anyway, speaks for itself, doesn't it? Check it out if you can. The scene, uh, the entire scene kind of alludes to uh, what's going on here, so enjoy. <laughs> 